So I don't want to talk about the cost of purchasing a Leica camera, whether you're purchasing it brand new or whether you're getting it off the, um, the resale market. Um, that's besides the point. Uh, too much is, is put into the cost of the camera versus the utility of it. So whatever the cost is, you know, that's, that's a whole nother conversation, which I'm not going to have. But however, I want to talk to you about how Leica has changed the way I engage in photography and making pictures and capturing moments. Um, so as you all know, if you've been following me, I am the owner of a um, Leica um, M11P. And I have to tell you, this, this camera right here has really redefined who I am as a photographer. Um, and I would even go as far as saying, prior to owning this camera, I, felt, I saw myself as someone more um, of a casual hobbyist and not one who's actually doing this because it's connected to what I do professionally. Um, I am a principal in the South Bronx um, I've been doing turnaround work, which is going to schools that are the most neediest to um, support in changing the trajectory of the school community. These are usually schools that have struggled for a number of years, um, have had really poor um, performance when it comes to just where the kids are, are um, academically, and also struggling communities. And I've done this work for over 20 years, and at this point in time, um, I've decided that my most recent assignment that I, was, that I was going to document it, I've documented in the past, like, you know, um, kept a journal um, here and there, uh, taking some pictures. But I can tell you right now where I'm at, I am well, I don't know how many, how many pictures, but I was doing the math in my head. I think the last video I did, I talked about that, I've taken over 2,000 pictures. Um, it's well over that, definitely well over that because um, just yesterday we had an event I was at and um, by the time I was done just pulling out my Leica to take some shots of the superintendent speaking some shots of my students um, engaging in in doing a podcast I I don't know how I got 50 pictures in a span of maybe you know 10 minutes so that's the thing about when you have a camera in your hand and you're and you're in tune to the environment Capturing images is, is not hard to do, but the feel that you get out of those images, that's the key. The thought process, the emotion, the, 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 the nuances of what's happening, it's something to be said about just grabbing um, a Canon, like, you know, like my Canon R5 and just, like I said, spraying, catching everything versus watching and saying, I'm telling a story because I see this. I'm telling that story because I see that, which requires me to get my camera and say, I need to focus on this person here because my 28 millimeter lens is allowing me to capture an environment so you can see what they're doing in this moment in time. Um, but then only that, because I, I just can't take my camera out and just point and shoot because because of the um of excellent autofocus i have to be the one to do the autofocusing because it has to be what i see from me what is it that i'm seeing what is this that my eyeballs are automatically seeing and how does that translate into the camera which now i have to manually adjust to fit so um i slow down a lot now I pay attention to what I'm doing. I, I've actually, it's funny, yesterday I actually had um, um, access to my Canon and I had to run back to where my equipment was to grab my Leica because the moment that I was watching that moment, the moment that I was seeing required a feel that was so special that whatever pictures I took in that moment had to be photographs that the person I was going to give them to or the people I was gonna present it to would always remember versus like shots that are just like catch, capturing everything 
the way we typically expect it to look. You know, sharpness and clarity and color that looks, I don't know how to describe it. This is a look of photographs today. They're just standard, crisp, clear, everything either in sharp focus or amazing bouquet versus the pictures that I look at in those old photo books. And I'm like, wow, is that what it felt like to be there at that moment, whether it's in at, in 1940s or the 50s or um, coming back from World War II or protesting during Vietnam, those images of Dr. King at, 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 uh, at the, at the, um, at the, uh, uh, Lincoln, at the Lincoln Monument, those those moments that when you when you see a picture, it tells you where you are. And I feel like to, today, because of the way technology is, we don't have those moments. The two thousands all look the same for the most part. You know, technology has, has taken away those things that make us um, that makes moments in time unique. So you can see a picture and say, I think I know when that was taken, you know. Um, and yes, the pictures I do take, they're definitely going to be telltales, like, you know, like, you know, the things that are in, in the background, the people, what clothes are they wearing. But I want to be able to capture moments emotionally that, that make you feel like, wow, I was there or I wish I could have been there. And this allows me to do that. The like allows me to do that. Um, but the thing that's interesting too is, um, I've gotten to a point where, and I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, like when it comes to my ISO, I set it in at auto, you know, the camera right here, let me see if I can get that focus to focus right there. So, um, the ISO, right, the uh, ISO right here, I put it on auto, the setting there. Then what I do with my, um, with my, uh, shutter speed. I put that in an auto as well. So I kind of create my own aperture priority. Because when I'm in a room and I'm trying to ca capture things that are happening in that space, um, I don't want to find myself fidgeting because things are moving so quickly. So I want to be able to make sure I'm capturing what I want to capture. But the one thing that I, I'm constantly playing with is, is, my, um, um, is my aperture. So the ISO in auto, the shutter speed um, in auto, but the aperture. Am I going? To, this is a twenty-eight. This is a twenty-eight millimeter um, uh, f two. So am I going to have my camera wide open, you know, um, in a space, or am I going? Am I going to stop down to like a four or five because I want to capture all the faces, or everyone that's in that space, so you can see the story. Especially yesterday, the event I was at was a um, was a uh, uh, a district wide financial literacy expo. So you had people in in financial spaces, bankers, and uh, elected officials, people who care about making sure the community is it becomes literate, you know, in financial you know, financially. But then you had all these children who were there who who were also presenting the work they're doing at their schools. We're talking about elementary through middle school. And some high school kids were there too. So you're there trying to capture the moments, the feels, what's happening. And it's very important, you know, um, for me to be able to make a decision. What is the story I want to tell in that space? And this has allowed me to do that. Um, learning zone focusing. It took me a couple of YouTube videos to understand the concept because for a long time, these all these little numbers here, I just never understood it. I was like, what do these numbers mean? Like, you know, and finally I said, okay, I'm going to watch a YouTube video. I'm going to sit down here and pay attention. And honestly, it took me an hour of repeating of um, one or two videos that I finally understood it. Wow, I can take my camera. I can tell myself that this is the f-stop that I want. You know, is it, is it, is it, is it a, a four, five, 11, depending on how much, um, how much um, um, I want. Now my brain's not working. How much depth of field I want to be able to control. And then know that once that's, um, once I've made that selection, now I can tell myself anything within a certain space. If you're three feet away from me, if you're, a feet away from me, 15 feet infinity. I know 
if my subject is within that space, I can take a picture of the subject. I know I'm going to have reasonable sharpness. Not perfect, but reasonable. Again, I think about all the pictures from the books that I read in, in history. And rarely was a picture ever truly sharp. Unless it was a staged person sitting in a studio or they were st sitting still knowing the picture was being taken or maybe they were sitting still or not moving, not knowing the picture was taken. But the photographer had ample time to hold and capture that image and not worry about movement. You know, the, the greatest enemy to a great photograph is movement. So being able to adjust for it, your, your, um, your shutter speed, your ISO, your aperture, you know, is very powerful. And the fact that I get to have a conversation with, with um, I haven't named, I haven't named, I, I don't know if she's a she or a he, but I haven't named it yet. But having the conversations of, okay, what are we going to do? What is this going to look like? Why do we want to do it that way? But these are the conversations happening in my head. And um, I'm loving every moment of it. You know, the only thing I want to tell you that I'm, I'm working on is the fact that the fact that I can go back and look at it um, sometimes does slow me down. Because sometimes I, I go back and look. But then there are times where I have to tell myself, look, Jay, just take the pictures. If there, if if you lost the moment, you missed the moment, it is what it is. So so I, I'm, I'm doing that more of that now. And um, But it's hard because being trained, your brain being trained to operate digital cameras, uh, DSLRs or um, mirrorless, where you know I can look at the picture real quick and make sure I did it right. That's 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 a struggle, especially when you want to be a purist and just capture the image and let you, and believe in your ability to judge distance, lighting, um, 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 the right shutter speed. Like that's that's the challenge there. So um, but yeah. I'm not talking about costs. We're not talking about um, all the other stuff people I talk about when they talk about Leica. Um, I'm talking about what it's doing for me as a thinker, as an intellectual, in a space where I'm capturing, I'm trying to tell a story about my school community and the work that is happening and has been happening for the past year. This has been a very, very powerful tool. Um, but yeah. I suggest if you're able to go your hand on one of these and really allow yourself to fall in love with it and then create and without hindering yourself that listen you should do it and I'll tell you this in my next video I'm going to talk to you about how this guy here my Leica M11P has put me in a in a, in a crash in a crash course with this guy here. So what is this? And we'll talk about this more in the next, in the next couple of videos. This is a Canon, uh, let me see if I can get that focus up right here. Uh, where are you? Nope, you're on this side, I'm sorry. EOS Elan. It's a film camera. This camera, I believe, came out in 1991. This I bought on eBay for um, $64. It's a, it's a hybrid between all the cool things that the digital cameras give us, all the same, pretty much all the same buttons and all that good stuff, right? The only difference is this takes 35 millimeter film and guess what? There is no digital screen in the back. So I gotta take my pictures and hope <laughs> that when I develop them, that the 30, what, 32 pictures in here, the 32 captures come out halfway decent. But I'm doing this because I want to train my brain to re be in the space of saying, I saw that I took it. I'm not worrying about what it looks like until I go back and give myself time to now open it and see like a gift. What did I do? What did I capture? What did I make? So I'm going to be practicing walking around. I'm using, um, Kodak 400 XTX, um, black and white um, film, and I'm excited. I already took five images. I got I got uh, the camera a couple of days ago. 
I threw the great thing about the, the Canon and what I'm doing, I'm using the Canon is because um, this is the EOS, so it has the uh, EF lens mount. So I, I get to put on my, all my Canon glass for the most part, except for the RF series fits on here. This right here is the um, 1635 uh, uh, 2.8 uh, version three that's on here. You know, beautiful L lens. So I'm gonna play around with this, play around with my other lenses and see if what I'm learning from my Leica as far as how I triangulate between ISO and shutter speed and, and, and um, aperture is translating to my brain actually being closer to capturing what I want and not always having to rely back on the digital screen to confirm if I was right or wrong. All right, I'm done talking. I hope this is helpful to anyone out there. Um, I'm not doing reviews and all that stuff. I'm just telling you a story, sharing with you my experience of being, um, of trying to be a better photographer and and, and really um, falling into this art um, in a way that's authentic and fun. All right, y'all. We change Joku, Sneaker Principle, and I'll talk to you all next time. Peace.